I would like to see a man in the kitchen cooking and serving me my plates and serving me wine and us having a intellectual conversation, you know. That would be a nice first date to me. some like dope music over it and we're just gonna vibe out and warm up together and then we're gonna get right into you guys's questions so yeah <laughs> and then we'll get into the details of the outfit um, after the questions. So I did write you guys' questions down. They're not like categorized or anything like that. So they're gonna be pretty random. Some of these questions is funny. I'm like, girl, what? But some of these questions are very personal, um, but hey, that's what I signed up for. So first question is, um, how do you stay positive? I feel like I'm in a negative hole and don't smile as much anymore. Damn, Kendrick. Your pain. Life is going to always have obstacles, right? You're gonna always go through trials and tribulations. Um, that just is what it is, and that's just something that you have to kind of like chalk up and accept. But for me, how do I stay positive? Well, first I have to like identify why I'm not in a positive state of mind. 
So like, I have to pinpoint, okay, where is this negative energy coming from? Why am I feeling this way? And then try to come up with a solution of how I can change it. So like, I have my days where I wake up on the right side of the bed and I'm feeling like motivated, positive, beautiful. You name it, I feel it. You name all things good, I'm feeling. And then you have days where I just wake up feeling very triggered. Like today, honestly, prime example, um, I had a really bad day today. But that's because <laughs> I allowed an outside um, entity uh, to kind of like disrupt my peace. At some point, you kind of have the you kind of have to take like accountability. So what I do first is identify what the problem is, take accountability, and figure out a solution of how I can change it. So for example, today when I was feeling like crap, um, I allow yourself to feel that way. I have a sometimes I have a lot of I have a tendency to kind of like mask my feelings. Like if I'm feeling a certain type of way, I'll try to like fake it as if I'm not. Cause in my brain, I'm like, well, if I fake, you know, you fake it till you make it. You know, if you pretend to be happy, then you'll be happy. No, that's not the case. Allow yourself to feel however it is that you're feeling, but don't sit in it. You know, don't, don't, don't sit in it. Honestly, <laughs> for me, what I did was I picked up my camera <laughs> and I inserted my SIM card into my computer, uploaded clips to my Final Cut Pro, and I started editing. Now, for me, it's like very therapeutic. Editing videos and creating content for me is therapeutic. Um, so me looking up music to kind of like include in my blogs and my videos um, and just me editing just in general is, it puts me in a whoo, ha space, like a ah, type of space, right? <laughs> and that transitioned into me wanting to record this video that I'm recording right now um, because I was not in that mental space earlier today. So identify what it is that you love to do, like figure out what it is that you enjoy doing and what you like doing. And whenever you get into that like funk mode, girl, go do it, go do it. But yeah, I don't wanna spend too much time on that question, but that's how I stay positive. So yeah, if any of you can just have advice on that question, um, leave your comments down below. Um, I'm not Mrs. Know-it-all, so yeah, you know what I'm saying. We all, we all here for each other. And okay, so the next question is, what does it mean when a guy stalks your story but doesn't show any interest in the DMs? Kendrick, he got a girlfriend. <laughs> he has a girlfriend. Uh, that's just what I think. So, you know, you can tell when, okay, so when you post a story, you're gonna have like the, the, the same 10 people that shows up at the top of your view, you know, viewers of your stories. And typically they're the same people, you know, people who are like quick to like watch your stories, right? So for me, I got three guys. It's like these three guys that, that don't be talking to me, um, that are always watching my stories. Right? And over time, you know, I was trying to figure out like, why, who is these men? Why are they like, they really, really, they really fond of your kid. You know, they really fond of your kid. Uh, they like quick, they like one of the first ones to like like your pictures and view your stories or whatever. But then you go to their Instagram or you go to their stories, they got girlfriends, they lie. So they, there is nothing wrong with looking. So, you know, that's what they doing. But they're not showing interest in the DMs, baby, because they probably got girlfriends. That's, that's just what I'm thinking. Been a girlfriend for five years. Should I give it up and start looking for a man ready to propose? Kendra, if you've been a girlfriend for five years. No. Um, <laughs> to me, I think that's too long. But it depends on how old you are. Like, if you're... 23 and you guys been dating since you were 17 then no like like then like no your 20s is not for marriage okay um but that's just my opinion you don't gotta listen to me so i feel like if you are 23 years old and you've been dating the same guy for the past five years and you guys have great chemistry great chemistry and your relationship is healthy 
No, don't rush it. But I, if you, I hate to pay age on like marriage and like commitment and like all that stuff. But like, at my age, I'm 26 and I start dating somebody. And by the time I'm 31, he doesn't look at me as his wife and hasn't proposed to me. No, it's time to move on and find the next candidate. Next. If you're older and you've been a girlfriend for five years, girl, you need to be looking for the next candidate because he ain't taking you seriously. What is something that you do every day that helps you feel good and feel confident? My skincare routine. <laughs> Uh, that's something that I like kind of like recently picked up and started really taking seriously is my skincare routine. Um, so when I when I do that, when I do like my full blown skincare routine, that makes me feel oh so good and oh so confident. So like in the morning, I get up, I um, wash my face, I brush my teeth, I um, make me some breakfast, I light my candles, you know, I play my um, Leslie Odom or my reggae music and that's something that I like to do in the morning when I wake up to kind of like make me feel good. I got Hey Google telling me, you know, it's time to uh, eat breakfast. You know, I like just ignore the pool. You know, I think just having a routine, I think what I'm trying to say is creating a routine for myself um, definitely helps me stay confident and you know, like feel good. And when I don't, when I don't follow my routine, then you know, my day can feel a little discombobulated, i.e. like this morning, you know what I'm saying? But, so yeah, to answer the question, um, following my routine, creating a routine and following it, and yeah, that helps me stay um, positive and help me feel good and feel confident. Okay, next question. Is wanting every man you date to be your husband a bad thing? <laughs> um, no, I, I don't think that that is a bad thing. I look at that as you dating with intentions. Dating with intentions is, um, is a good thing. Now for me, whenever I choose to start dating again, I personally, I was, already, I, was already, I was already married. I'm not rushing to date to find my husband. That's just, I'm not, I'm, I'm not there. And it doesn't mean that you're forcing your, your love ideals on another person. That's not what you're supposed to do. Just don't like go overboard. But dating with intentions is not a bad thing. I think that it's a perfect way of creating an awareness and clear communications on what it is that um, you are looking for. Like, I don't know what else to say about that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> How has your relationship with men been since the whole incident? I don't have relationships with men outside of um, the ones that are close to me and that were already close to me. Honestly, like, when someone comes up to me and asks me for the number, like literally, if it wasn't yesterday, it was the day before yesterday, I was literally walking towards the elevator and a guy was walking away from the elevator in my building. And he turned around, he's like, oh my God. <laughs> and, I, and I looked and I was like, hi. And he's like, you are so beautiful, can you take my number? And I, he wasn't a bad looking guy. I just had absolutely no interest in like getting his number. So uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a nice person, I'm like a very nice person and I don't like all that like extra like, oh no, I, I'm not gonna do that. So I was like, um yeah, sure. So he's like, you know, he's telling me his number and I'm like acting like I'm putting it in my phone. And he was like, did you save it? And I was like, yeah, I saved it. And he was like, all right, well call me, da, da, da. And I was like, okay. Didn't save it, didn't wanna call. It's just, unfortunately, I'm just in a space where I'm just not there. Like, I just, leave me alone. Leave me alone, <laughs> leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. So how has your relationship been with men since the whole incident? Non-existent. If you go into every situation expecting long-term, is that too much to expect? It's kind of like the same question as like dating with intentions. No, I don't think that that's too much to freaking expect. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna leave that there. I don't think that's too much to expect. What do you guys think? Do you, do you regret publicly speaking on DV within your marriage? No, I don't. Um, 
and like I said before, I feel like um, I had to come out and talk about it because if I didn't, I would be talking to him right now because that was the cycle, that was the norm. Like even though I know I knew it was wrong, that was what I knew within that relationship. Do I regret talking about it and coming out about it? No, I do not. It's a part of my healing part. It's a part of my healing process um and it has allowed me to um break free i still have the locks on my wrist right now emotionally and mentally but you know i'm in a healing process and so me coming out and talking about it um has really um helped has really helped me damn i don't even <laughs> I think I'm kind of like doing this too soon. I don't think that I'm even in an emotional space to even be doing like a Q&A. But it's like I'm already in the middle of doing it and I said that I was gonna do it. Maybe I should keep it short. Maybe I should just keep it short. To answer your question, do I regret publicly talking about it? No, I do not. Is Atlanta your permanent destination or do you plan to relocate? Honestly, I just moved here. Um, and I haven't really gotten to experience or enjoy what a Atlanta has to offer yet. Um, so I can't even really like judge or, or really speak on that. Um, so yeah, we'll just have to see, we'll just have to see. Would you relocate to New York? I love me some New York. Like that is my ideal hometown that is my I, that is where i can see me raising kids you know <laughs> i know it's like sounds so weird to like say but i see my children being raised in the city um it's just so freaking expensive but to be honest that's why i came down to atlanta to kind of like secure a bigger bag and my ideally i would like to run my ass back up north <laughs> So to answer your question, would I relocate to New York? Um, yes, I would. Love New York. Have you been in contact with your husband? Oh, y'all, y'all so stressful. Oh, my stomach hurt. No, seriously, my stomach hurt. Um, okay, here's the tea. So, th this morning, actually, which is why I woke up in a shitty motherfucking space. Mind you, it's been two months since the situation, it's been two and a half months since the incident happened. He he didn't call from a no call ID this time, he called from his actual phone. And I'm like, I said, what's going on? He's like, um, do you got time to talk later? I said, about what? He said, well, I'm just asking, do you have time to talk later? I said, about what? And he's like, um, let me say, never mind. I'm sorry to interrupt you and your life. And then he hangs up. Fucking manipulative ass bitch. It pissed me off. Like, that just triggered the freak out of me this morning. Like, like, ah, it just triggered the crap out of me. And then he calls back, like, in the afternoon, and like a dummy, I answer the phone. Like, look, we're just being here, honest here. A dummy, I answer the freaking phone, and, um, I'm so embarrassed. He, um, you know, is like, why are you acting like this? Has the audacity to ask me, why am I like being cold or whatever? And I told him, um, for him to even ask me that just further solidifies why I believe that not only do you belong in a jail cell, but you belong underneath it in hell. So when I said that, you know, he took it, it, it took him no time to take his motherfucking mask off. He took that goddamn mask off and said, um, what'd he say? He said, uh, we'll see who's standing last or something like that. And I said, well, what is that supposed to mean? Basically, we'll see who lasts. Like, if, if I'm alive to ensure that he does uh, suffer the consequences for his actions. So basically, he's telling me that he um, And these are like, this is shit that I'm dealing with right now. This is shit that I'm, this is shit that I heard this morning. Like, but but then I had to look in the mirror today and I had to take accountability. You answer the phone, Najee. Stop answering the fucking phone. What made you start a YouTube channel? So, I have been a YouTube lover since high school, right? Um, 
but the only people that I like, the only type of content that I liked watching on YouTube was makeup. I liked watching makeup and hair videos. So I was a makeup and hair video girl. Um, and even when I joined the military, I only watched makeup and hair videos. Um, I didn't get into um, vlogs until, I don't even know. See, I thought that I was doing something new. <laughs> I was doing something new when I started to do my little vlogs um that's when I had decided to, that I was going to move to New York I was in service it was my last year on my contract and I was like documenting my um experience so <laughs> I thought that I, I literally thought that I was doing something new with these vlogs no bitch you are late to the game so um uh yeah I didn't get into like vlogs and stuff until I decided that I was going to move to New York and when I got to New York. Um, but what made me start a YouTube channel was, I don't know, it was just kind of like an escape from the military. I was miserable in the military. I did not like it. It was depressing. It was just like a getaway in a um, my, my fairy tale reality where I can just like be myself and express myself through makeup and editing and music you know i didn't do a lot of talking when i was doing my makeup and stuff like that because i'm not really good with public speaking but um i love the art of it all is brandon in a relationship <laughs> no brandon is not in a relationship um i honestly have not known brandon to ever be in a relationship brandon has never been in like a real relationship since i've known him have you have you and brandon ever thought about being in a relationship no me and brandon have not um thought well i'm not gonna say thought because I don't, I don't know what people really think but me and brandon have never talked about being in a relationship and um yeah but have you and brandon ever had sex no, me and Brandon have never been intimate. We've never kissed. We've never had sex. No, none of that. Brandon is literally my friend. I love him to freaking death. To death do us part. For real, for real. Are you okay emotionally? Question mark. Spiritually, emotionally. I think that's what they said. And then they said, I'm a Gemini and I know how we can pretend. So the question is, am I okay? I am as okay as I can be. One step at a time, one day at a time, one step at a time. I know that I do need counseling. I have not actively searched for um, that resource, but I know that it is needed. We try, I'm trying. What did you like most about New York City? I like the energy. And to be honest, you know, people don't like, people always complain about like, <laughs> people all, when they come, when they go to New York, they always complain, complain about the trash and like the rats and like how dirty it is and stuff. I think I love New York so much that even it's shit don't stink to me. Like, <laughs> New York shit don't stink to me. Like when I see the dirt and the rats and like the hundred people and all this stuff, I think that it brings character to the city. I personally love it. I I accept New York for what it is and I just love it and it's dirty drops. Yes. I love New York, so I don't necessarily hate anything about New York. The only thing I do hate about New York, only because it really, really be it really fucked with me when I was living there <laughs> was the parking okay and it's not that you gotta pay for parking or um that it ain't no parking that d doesn't even bother me what bothers me about new york parking situation is the tickets it's the alternate side parking because my mind just be everywhere I, i'm i'm here one minute i'm here next minute i'm here and i'm here the last thing i'm thinking about is moving my car from the left side to the street to the right side of the street so that way i don't get no ticket so i done had 
So that's the only thing that I hate about New York, but outside of that, I love everything about New York. I love the subway, I love the trash, I love the people, I love the energy, I love the busyness. I love everything about New York, I promise you, like I really do. What's a good first date other than dinner? I'm in my 20s, but I still like to have fun. What's a good first date? A good first date other than dinner for me, would be shopping. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, a good first date. I guess you can be like cliche and go on a walk, but I'm not going on a walk. No, I'm not doing that. Instead of going to dinner, I think cooking dinner. Him cooking dinner, not you, but him cooking dinner and hosting um, the evening. I think that would be like a really nice day. I would like that. I would like to see a man in the kitchen cooking and serving me my plates and serving me wine and us having a intellectual um, conversation, you know. That would be a nice first date to me. Or even like an activity. No, I'm here for him cooking dinner. That would be nice. A nice first day, I'm cooking dinner and cooking wine and us having a conversation and getting to know each other. Yeah, that'd be nice. So, I mean, yeah, those are it for the questions. I think that there were more questions, but I'm tired. Yeah, if you ended up liking this video or you could relate or, you know, you just vibing with the makeup or the look, give this video a thumbs up. Help boost the algorithm and um go ahead and hit that bell notification button too so you can get notified whenever i post a new video hit that subscribe button down below if you like these type of videos i'm gonna get better this you know it's my first time like really kind of like doing these i'm gonna get better but if you like these type of videos you know what I'm saying? let me know down below in the comment box and um we're gonna keep it coming yeah <laughs> these shoes is fucking fire I know these shoes cute. These shoes look so cute. So yeah, that was the fit from the other night. I know fire i know fire i'm gonna link everything down below in the description box and don't forget to check out jbw um they are having a huge black friday sale right now do not miss out on getting you a watch from jbw i'm telling you i got three of them babies and um they're just fire <laughs> Send me the new key, and I'll be right there. Let me come check in my bed. Go time.